Hey everyone, this is Gwen. Welcome to my sewing and DIY channel. Love is in the air in the studio here this week. So, Valentine's Day is just around the corner and I've been feeling pretty inspired to make Valentine's Day themed sewing projects. In this video today, I am sharing a couple of vintage inspired Valentine's Day themed sewing projects with everyone. The first one is this 1950s inspired sweetheart apron and the second project is basically me trying to replicate this vintage Valentine's Day card, but with my dog. I know he's the wrong kind of dog, but just like so many other DIY projects that I've shared here, I like to make do with what I have. So I'm just making do with the fact that I have a different dog. So if you're ready, grab a cup of tea and some chocolate covered pretzels and let's roll. I also want to come in quickly to say that unlike my in-depth sewing tutorials, this one is a little bit more haphazard. The Sweetheart apron is made using this thrifted bed sheet and a thrifted placemat which I'll show you in closer detail in a bit. There are four components to the Sweetheart apron. The waistband, the skirt, the heart bib and the straps. The waistband of the apron is made up of two rectangles. The width of the rectangle is 1 inch plus seam allowance and the length of each rectangle is the waist measurement plus 15 inches extra on both sides for tying the apron on the back in a bow. And with seam allowance of course. Now if you would like more length to tie a longer bow, then go ahead and add more than 15 inches for each side. To make the apron skirt, I started off by cutting two pieces of big rectangles. The length of each rectangle is the length of the apron skirt from the waist to wherever you want it to be. For me, I cut the skirt piece to sit somewhere between my mid thigh and my knees. The width of the rectangle is just your waist measurement. Don't forget to add seam allowance to both measurements. This bit here is really just a little bit of extra. I folded these rectangles in half lengthwise, then trimmed along the bottom and sides to get rounded corners that made the skirt piece look a little bit like a wide U shape. If you would like, you could 100% leave the skirt as a regular rectangle too. The heart bib is made using this thrifted placemat with some really beautiful quilted detail. The bib is basically the shape of a heart but with the pointed bottom chopped off. Here's how I figured out the size and shape of the bib. I took a piece of paper that's about the length and width of the front of my body and folded it in half lengthwise. Then I traced out half the shape of the heart with the flat bottom, pinned the two layers of paper together and cut the shape out in this manner. So here is how the template looks like. Um, I like the coverage over my bust area, but I feel like perhaps it's a little bit too narrow um, where my waist is. So instead of tracing a new pattern out, I'm just going to make sure that I don't cut all the way uh, along this edge, but I'll cut from like here out here a little bit more. I think it's tricky to draw a full heart with both sides being equal, but with this method of drawing and cutting, I was able to make sure that both sides of the heart would end up looking exactly the same. Under normal circumstances, I think I would finish this raw edge with bias binding, but I am not intending to enter some kind of clothing pageant with this, so I'm just gonna finish it with zigzag stitches. And I am just going to test it with the um, remnant piece right here just so I could get the stitch settings right. So there's still a little bit of gaps and to make it denser, I'm going to actually be kind of stopping the fabric from um, moving through the throat plate too quickly by using my hands to like, hold on to it. So if you watch what my hands are doing right here while sewing the zigzag stitches, I'm actually tugging my quilted bib ever so gently and preventing it from running through the machine too quickly. The edges ended up looking a little wonky after sewing, so I gave it a good press with my iron before moving on to the next step. Now the next thing is to add lace around the edge of the heart apron top and um, I'm gonna sew lace along the bottom edge of the apron skirt as well. 
<laughs> to attach the lace to the edge of the bib, I placed the lace over the original red zigzag stitches and then used smaller, wider zigzag stitches in white thread to go over the edge of the lace. The lace is sewn all around the edge of the bib except for the flat bottom bit. Once that was done, my bib was looking like this. Next, I sewed the apron skirt pieces right sides together all along the sides and the bottom. I kind of just remembered that I had the idea of adding a pocket onto the apron skirt, but it's a little too late for that now. Well, it's not too late, but I just really don't feel like I'm picking the stitches and at the end of the day, the pocket is really just a design feature, not a functional piece of pocket. It's just going to be enough for like three fingers. So I am not adding the pocket, but just an idea. If you want pockets, add it before you stitch the apron skirt right sides together. After that, I cut the seam allowance to about a quarter inch, flipped the skirt right sides out, pressed the seams flat, and attached the lace all along the seam on the right side of the skirt using the same small zigzag stitches in white thread just like I did with the bib. Now moving on to the waistband. First, I marked the midpoint of the waistband with a couple of small notches. Then I sandwiched the bib between the two waistband pieces, making sure that the waistband pieces have the right sides facing each other. I also matched up the midpoint of the waistband pieces and the bib piece together. I sewed the waistband together along this long seam and also sewed them together at the short end. After that, I clipped the seam allowance off the corners of the short ends and pressed the waistband pieces wrong sides together. Now we're starting to have something that kind of looks like half an apron. Next, I sewed two rows of basting stitches along the top of the skirt and gathered it until it's about the length of half of my waist measurement. Yes! The apron skirt is only going over the front of my body, not the entire width of my hips. Using the midpoint of the waistband as a guide, I measured and marked out where the apron skirt would start and end. And then using those markings as a guide, I pinned the skirt piece to the waistband right sides together. This stage is crucial if you want the bib and the skirt pieces to be absolutely centralized and aligned. Hot tip, if you hate pinning thick pieces of fabric together, these fabric clips are your best friends. So this is the right side. Ooh. Ooh, cute, cute, cute. Now I had a little bit of dilemma over this next part. At first I thought about top stitching the rest of the waistband together, then I decided I didn't want the look of top stitching, and then I thought maybe I would hand sew it with blind stitch, and then I had another idea. Okay, I'm gonna flip it back right sides together as much as I can until I get to the part... Let me see. Until I get to the part where the apron skirt is to right sides together like that. And I'm gonna sew it along here and then flip it inside out and then hand sew this part of the waistband to the apron skirt. After sewing as much of the waistband as I could right sides together with my sewing machine and making the horrible decision of turning it inside out with my finger, I hand stitched the rest of the waistband to the apron skirt. All that turning stuff inside out and hand sewing took about an hour, but we're ready to move on now. This is the final step. I haven't cut the pieces out because I needed to get to this part before I could make the final measurement. But it's looking so cute, oh my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> I wanna make straps for the apron. So there are two ways to go about doing that. One is to have the straps tied around the neck, but I feel like if I had to do that tie and this tie, it's like a lot of time. So I want it like regular straps that go along the back. Kind of similar to the design I made for my um, detachable pinafore dress. All the way to here. Right, so it's about 25 inches and I'm just gonna add five inches to have a little bit of ease to play around with. So to make the straps, I cut four pieces of rectangles with the following measurements. 
To make one strap, I sewed two of these rectangles right sides together only along the long edges. I repeated the same process with the other two rectangles to make two straps. And then I turned the straps inside out, this time with the safety pin, and pressed the seams open for each strap. I finished the raw, short edges with zigzag stitches and now we're going to start attaching them to the apron. I started by attaching one end of a strap to one side of the bib. I placed the end of the strap right below the edge of the lace on the wrong side of the bib and stitched it in place with straight stitches. Then, to make sure that I had the other strap attached exactly opposite, I folded the bib in half lengthwise to find out where the other strap is supposed to be attached. And just like before, I sewed the strap to the bib with straight stitches, back stitching at the start and end of the stitch line. Last leg of this project, really close. Okay, so I have straps attached. Now what I need to do is to attach it to the waistband. I'm gonna kind of pin it somewhere two inches from here. Just like the detachable pinafore bib project, this part is a little tricky so get a friend to help you if you can. Now if you're planning to have the straps crossing your back, the straps will look like this, slanting at an angle when pinned to the waistband. Just like I did with the bib part of the straps, I compared both sides of the apron to make sure that I had the straps attached in the same way on both sides. So I started off by sewing the straps to the top edge of the waistband, then I decided to cut the excess off leaving just about enough to fold the end of the straps to the back of the waistband and stitch it in place. The first time I did it, it ended up with a little bit of extra flap looking like this and I didn't quite like the way it looked so I trimmed it again, this time making sure that the end of the strap is parallel to the waistband and finally, it ended up looking like this. The reveal for the apron is at the end of the video. And if you have been enjoying the video so far, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And right now, we're going to move straight on to the dog whatchamacallit. Let's go! The main material for this dog heart cushion thing is this red piece of material that I got from the thrift shop. Honestly, I don't know what it is. It is 100% polyester so it's not a tea towel and I don't know if anyone would use a polyester handkerchief so it's just a mystery towel thing for me. Okay moving on. I started off by tracing the shape of the heart to make the cushion. To make sure that the heart is just the right size for Ramses, I used a bandana that I made for him as a guide for the boundary of the heart. And just like I did with the sweetheart apron, I drew only half of the heart first, then folded the paper in half and cut the shape out accordingly. Then I traced the shape out on a piece of white fusible interfacing and drew the same outline half an inch from the original border. This outline will serve as a guide for me to sew this white design around the border of the heart. And then I also traced out the seam allowance and when I was done, my pattern piece on the interfacing looked like this. After that, I applied the interfacing in the shape of the heart onto the red mystery fabric. <laughs> Folded the fabric in half and cut the pattern out. So that gave me a piece of red heart with the interfacing and another piece of the red heart with no interfacing. Now here is the super fun part. To replicate the black text, I used GIMP, a free and open source program that works kinda like Adobe Illustrator to some degree to help me out. I took a picture of my original heart pattern piece and overlaid it with the Valentine's Day card design and adjusted the text size accordingly until I got a nice scale that works for my pattern piece. Then I traced out each letter with some line tool option in the program and because I knew I was going to trace it on the wrong side of the heart, I flipped the text horizontally at the end so it became like a mirror image. I printed the design out and it looked like this. I thought I got the scale of my digitized heart right but it turned out just a teensy bit smaller but it's not a big issue. 
After that, I traced the text onto the white interfacing using a pencil and tracing paper that I usually use to trace sewing patterns. If I had planned it out properly, I think I could have even just transferred the design onto the interfacing by placing it directly under the interfacing. But anyway, it all worked out and here's how it looks right now. Isn't it amazing how it all worked out? Here's another super fun part of this project. This is how I sewed this scalloped detail around the border of the heart using only my vintage Singer sewing machine. I started off by using the scallop stitch function and used the outline I traced out as a guide when moving my work around. I had to experiment with the stitch length and the stitch width a little bit before I embarked on this project, but here's what I ended up with. And then to make the scallop outline look thicker, I added zigzag stitches all over it. The next step that I need to work on is embroidering the text. Now, there are two ways that I think I could do it. Either use the same method of doing like straight stitches first, wrong side up so I can see where I'm going with the marking, and then doing zigzag stitches on the right side. I think what I'm gonna do instead is hand embroider with embroidery flaws. Why do I do these things to myself? So I'm not really going to go into details on how I did the embroidery here because I'm not really good at it. But all I can say is that I used three strands of black embroidery floss and used basic running stitches for this design. There was also quite a bit of tangled floss involved and that was definitely not part of the plan. But when I was done, I was actually really happy with how it turned out. You'll also notice that I added a little one inch wide channel on the back of the other heart pattern piece. I will be placing a blue ribbon through this channel so that this little heart cushion could be worn on Ramses's neck. I actually wanted to use a remnant piece of the same mystery red fabric but it ended up fraying really badly so I abandoned the idea and switched to working with the red thrifted bed sheet from the previous project instead. So now you'll also notice that I've got a heart shape cut in orange flannel. I decided to add this to the cushion before stitching um, the original layers together to add a little bit more like fluff and poof to the cushion. And here I have placed all three layers together, stitched them together along the stitch line, leaving a two inch opening to turn it right side out trimmed the seam allowance especially at the pointed bottom and big dip in the middle of the heart oh, wait i've got all the layers wrong it's supposed to be this and the the back right sides together and then the orange on top of it not sandwiched between <gasps> okay so I made all the adjustments off camera because it was just too heartbreaking for me to do it with the film rolling. Especially hard because I had already trimmed the seam allowance. Anywho, I got the mistake fixed, filled the heart cushion with some polyfill, stitched the opening shut by hand and made a little neck bend with a little blue bow using some lace ribbon in my stash. The length of the neck bend is about the circumference of Ramses' neck and has a snap button sewn on each end so that the heart cushion could be put on and off Ramses easily. And I was done! Oh darling, your treats are here! Overall, I'm pretty happy with how the project turned out for this week. I actually intended to recreate more of these vintage Valentine's Day cards. Life just happened. Perhaps that's a project for future me. If you have made it this far into the video, you should subscribe to my channel and see what else I get up to. And if you have been here for a while, I appreciate you so much. I will see you again next week for more sewing, DIY, and a little bit of fun. Bye! Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I kind of want to get this. What do you want it for? So I could dress you up like this vintage Valentine's Day card and take a picture of you? Oh my gosh, no.